In this video, I'm going to give a quick overview of the Code Journey Kit and build a few projects to show how it works. You'll just need the kit and an Apple or Android tablet or phone. Let's get started. First, build Project 2, which uses the U33 SC controller to turn on different lights. It's easiest to assemble the circuit off of the rover, snapping in the large pieces like the SC controller first. Also, whenever you build a circuit, make sure the switch starts in the off position. When you place the LEDs in the W1, be sure that the positive end points towards the SC controller because some parts only function with the correct polarity. Once you're finished, just put the board on top of the rover, turn the red hexagons to secure it, and then snap the wires to their corresponding colors on the back of the rover. To start coding, install the Snap Circuits coding app on your phone or tablet. Once it's installed, just turn on the circuit, open the app, and tap the switch once your controller shows up on screen. If you have any issues, try turning Bluetooth off and back on again, and then restart the app. Control mode lets you turn the SC controller's snaps on and off remotely. This is a great way to play with your Snap Circuit kit, or to learn how more complicated circuits work before trying to code them. For the Snap Circuits Code Journey Kit, there's also a rover control mode. Notice how in this mode, the D-snaps are paired together in two groups of two for communicating both forward and backward. For example, to go forward, both the outside lights illuminate, making both wheels turn forward together. But to turn gradually left, only the bottom light illuminates. To rotate left, the bottom and second to top lights illuminate, telling the right side of the rover to go forward and the left side to go backward. Now let's move on to some coding. This is the bot code screen. The screen has four main sections, the library, the workspace, the display, and the control bar on the bottom. To add a command to your program, drag the icon from the library into the code area, and to remove a command, simply drag it anywhere out of the coding workspace. Let's say we want to turn on the light at snap D1. This means we should drag the D1 command into our code. Watch when the code is run, the D1 snap turns on, causing the first light to light up, and then turns off when the program stops. Now let's make the rest of the lights turn on in sequence after the first. Notice when you're running these commands, text appears in the code display corresponding to your blocks. This is what the code looks like that most programmers write to make computers do things. Something trickier to try with this project might be to turn on two lights at a time. For this, we would need to turn on the light for a long time with one command, but then we need another command to turn the light off. To change the amount of time that the light stays on, tap the block to edit it. You can turn the snap on for any time between 0 and 100. To keep the snap on after the command, tap the infinity button. To turn the snap off, Add in another command with a time of zero to reset it. Now that we can turn a light on for a long time, we can turn on more lights in between. Use the same idea to turn on and off the D2 snap. Great, now the lights both turn on. But I think they could be on for a bit longer. For this, we use a wait block after the light turns on. The wait block is a control structure, which is just a fancy way of saying it changes how the SC controller goes through your commands. Let's drag one of these in and run it. Since we have a program that does what we want it to do, tap the Save button to save your code and type a name so that you can easily recognize it. One last thing you might want to do is make the lights flash repeatedly instead of just turning on and off once. For this, you can use the other control called a loop. Drag the loop into your workspace and put your saved code inside it. This repeats the code inside the loop for however many times the number in the box says. For me, I'll put three. Another way to make programs is the Blockly section. You can do all the same things as in the bot code section, it just looks a little different. 
Project 3 lets you program your rover to move around and flash different lights. This code tells the Snap rover to do a short dance and then honk its horn. Some of these commands might look a little unfamiliar, because these are rover commands. These are like groups of the on-off commands from before, which then make the rover move a certain way, like moving forward or backward, turning or spinning. For example, the fifth command in the code on the right tells the rover to spin 90 degrees left. You could do the same thing by turning on the D2 and D3 snaps for a certain amount of time. The move blocks just take these commands and make them easy to work with. This last circuit lets you drive the rover around while playing tones through the speaker. In this example of some code you can try, the A snap turns on to play some sounds, and then the rover outlines a square on the floor. Since a square has four sides and four right angles, you can just do this by making the rover move forward and turn left four times. Loops are especially useful with the rover because many paths are repetitive. I hope this gives you a good starting point. Remember, you can always find more information in the manual. Have fun and thanks for watching.